Let me go over, again, exponential functions, because this is the way I wrote it in class, so I don't want to confuse you guys with maybe the, the notation they used in the book. In class, remember when we did exponential functions, it was y is equal to a times b raised to the x power. y was your output, a was the initial amount, b was either growth or decay, and x was how often it was raised to the power or compounded. Okay, so for exponential growth, you know something is exponential growth if its percentage is greater than 100%. So it's going to be y is equal to a times, now in place of b, if it's growth, is 1 plus the growth rate raised to the t power. Exponential decay is y is equal to a times 1 subtract r which would be your decay factor. So this is the amount that it is less than 100%. This is how much greater than 100% it is. Okay, and so some of the problems in your book are going to ask you to find the initial amount and then find either the growth or decay factor. So I've chosen two problems from your actual assignment that I gave you guys. And the first one here is number 10. And it, is, it says the h of t, and remember this is written in function notation. So this is the function h of t, so t is your input time, is equal to 175 would be your initial amount, whatever that is, times 1.028 raised to the t power. So you should be looking at this one, and the initial amount for this would be the 175. That's your a value, the initial amount. This, since it's greater than 1, notice if 1.028 is 1 plus 0 0.028. So the growth factor would be 0 0.028. But that, so for this one, your 0 0.028 is your growth factor, the R. This is 1 plus 0 0.028. So the 0 0.028 is your growth factor. You would want to write that as a percentage. Remember to change a decimal to a percent. You're going to move that 2 to the right. So this would be a 2.8%. 2.8% growth factor. Okay. For number 23, this one is written. It's the W of T is equal to 700. Now this would be your initial value, the initial amount times 0 0.995 raised to the t power. So for this one, you're looking at the b value and you're noticing that this is less than one. So this has to be an exponential decay. And this is one subtract, well, to get point, 0 0.995, that's gonna be one minus 0 0.005. So for this one, your decay factor would be 0 0.005, which again, as a percentage, would be, well, you're going to move the decimal two places to the right. This would be a 0.5% decay factor. 0.5% decay factor. Let's take a look at a couple problems dealing with compound interest. I picked this topic, compound interest is part of exponential growth, which I really think is an important thing that you guys definitely need to know, and that is an example of exponential growth, which again is compound interest. The equation that I gave you guys in class was B stood for balance in your account is equal to P, which represents the principal, how much you either invest or you take out as a loan, because remember this, could, this equation works both ways, times one plus, your interest rate as a percentage divided by N, which represents the number of times that your money is compounded. That could be one if it was annually, two if it was semi-annually, four if it's quarterly, 12 if it's monthly, 365 if it's daily. And then we're gonna raise that to the number of times it's compounded times T, which is the number of years because this is how often your money would be compounded, okay? So suppose it was compounded quarterly. So that would be four times every year. So if you had your money in there for five years, 
it would be four times five, that would be raised to the 20th power. All right. Now let's take a look. I've given you an example here that is similar to the ones in the book. And it would read, the ones in the book are saying, give the equation after T number of years for something like this, $2,000 deposit that earns 3% annual interest compounded quarterly. All right, so for this one, instead of B for balance, they're just gonna use Y for output. So I don't want you to get confused with that in the book. So the Chromebook assignment, this will be a Y here for balance, the output, is equal to, the principal is 2,000. That's how much we invested, times one plus, our interest rate on this one was 3%. 3%. And that as a decimal is 0 0.03. And we are going to divide that by N, which is the number of times it's compounded, which in this case would be 4 since it was quarterly. We are going to raise that to the, well, it's 4 times every year times T number of years. So they would simplify this, or you guys would simplify this as y is equal to 2,000 times. It's going to be 1 plus. Now 0 0.03 divided by 4 is 0 0.0075. 0 0.0075 is 0 0.03 divided by 4. And we're going to raise that to the 4t. One last thing that you would do on this would be y is equal to 2,000 times. You would add that up. It's just 1.0075 raised to the 4t. This would be the solution that the, the Chromebook would want, your assignment. Now, the ones I did in class, I actually gave you a, a number of years. So on this one, you know, suppose this was for five years. Again, if this was five years... Your equation would be y is equal to 2,000 times 1.0075 raised to the 4 times 5 is 20th power. You would do that in your calculator, and you would get how much your balance would be in that account after the 5 years. But on, on the, the assignment that you're given, you just need to come up with this guy right here. Thank you for joining in. I hope you made it through. I know these get a little long. But I try to go over everything with you guys on the assignment. Hope this helped for this week. Stay safe. Stay positive. Thanks.